I'm Tammy Bruce, and tonight the Biden administration is being exposed as rotten to its core and is on the verge of an all-out implosion as they stare failure right in the face. And the walls are beginning to crack a bit as some inside the administration are beginning to see the writing on the wall and the confession in a phone call to the former president of Afghanistan. First, as Biden continues to shift blame and tries to lie his way out of this disaster, at least one White House official is ripping off the veneer, telling Politico they were, quote, appalled and literally horrified that President Biden left Americans stranded in Afghanistan, adding, quote, we have failed in that no-fail mission. Did you ever think in your lifetime you would witness an American president bragging about leaving Americans behind and defending the indefensible? Choosing perceived political gain over the lives of Americans, choosing to create a new terror safe haven over safety and security, and choosing to actually spin for the Taliban instead of standing up for American allies. The tragedy unfolding in Afghanistan is a stark reminder of the deadly consequences of the left's woke agenda, where facts are also victims and hostages as they are sacrificed to false narratives and desperate and deadly lies. Consider Biden's now infamous conversation with the now former president of Afghanistan, Ghani, which legacy media continues to dismiss, ignore or minimize. Now, we know he directly told Ghani to lie about the deteriorating conditions on the ground. But no one mentions what Ghani said to Biden about what was actually happening. He said, Mr. President, we are facing a full scale invasion composed of Taliban full Pakistani planning and logistical support, and at least 10 to 15,000 international terrorists, predominantly Pakistanis, thrown into this. So that dimension needs to be taken account of. Ghani also complained to Biden that, quote, your Air Force was extremely cautious in attacking them, referring to the Taliban as they swept through the country. So, yes, it matters that Biden told Ghani to lie to change perceptions about what was happening. But what also this tells us is that Biden knew that the Taliban were on the offensive and that there was international participation in that offensive and that he had been told by Ghani it was so bad it was a full scale invasion. This means Biden was lying to the American people, our allies and even Congress when he said publicly multiple times that there was no expectation that the Afghan government was in trouble or that there was any indication that the collapse would happen or that the Taliban would take over the entire country. In other words, Biden was counseling Ghani to do what he was doing, which is lying about the situation on the ground to change perceptions. What was the goal? To get out on an arbitrary date so we could have a talking point about how great he is on September 11th. The truth did not matter. The lives of our troops did not matter. Of our interpreters, friends and helpers, of our allies, of all the innocent Afghans who did not act to get out sooner because no one was telling them of the urgency. Their lives didn't matter either. We need to know what else was said on this call, because it led to the deaths of 13 American service members and condemned thousands more Afghan allies and other innocents to the death at the hands of the Taliban. Will the White House live up to their mantra of transparency? Don't count on it. A call in in July, rather, between President Biden and former Afghanistan President Ghani. Can you tell us a little bit more about that call? Well, I'm not going to get into private diplomatic conversations or leaked transcripts of phone calls. Was the president in any way pushing a false narrative in that call with the Afghan president? I think it's pretty clear. Again, I'm not going to go into details of a private conversation. Oh, suddenly it's just a private conversation. Now, shouldn't the American people know what happened in that conversation? Why won't Biden release the transcript like he demanded of Trump following his 2019 call with Ukraine's president when he said, quote, such clear cut corruption damages and diminishes our institutions of government. At minimum, Donald Trump should immediately release the transcript of the call in question so that the American people can judge for themselves. But that's right. Democrats only care about phone calls when they matter to an election, not when they cost Americans their lives.
Former acting director of national intelligence Rick Rennell and Senator Tom Cotton join us to expand on the seriousness of this astounding revelation and address whether or not impeachment is actually possible. The fact that Biden is a liar is not news. He has been exposed as a plagiarist, which is essentially lying on paper. And his lies about himself make him one of the most powerful fabulists, which is a person who makes up wild stories, passing them off as truth in the world. Our problem is Joe Biden's lies and the lies of his enablers get people murdered. But the rot of the left, it doesn't just live in official Washington. It infects our state governments, our local governments, our major corporations and inside our schools and in communities all across the country. It also affects immigration. There is some good news, though, in the demand for answers as America First Legal is requesting the DOD inspector general investigate the Afghanistan withdrawal debacle and demands answers on exactly how we're vetting tens of thousands of refugees. Stephen Miller joins us with those details later. So why are the Democrats so incapable of living in reality and recognizing that everything they're doing is a complete and utter failure? Representative Lisa McLean speaks for all of us when she wonders why Joe Biden can't stop lying. What is so difficult about telling the truth? The American people deserve the truth. Uh, the truth and a little transparency, I really don't understand why it is so difficult for this administration and especially this president to tell the truth. She is clearly genuinely perplexed, as all the rest of us are as well. So, look, leftism infects every single institution it infiltrates. Nothing is too sacred for the left to use to advance its agenda. Even as Americans face the devastation of Hurricane Ida, the Democrats didn't see the need for empathy, but they did see an opportunity for political grifting by blaming it on climate change and using it to ask for more infrastructure money. Clearly following Rahm Emanuel's instructions, you never want a serious crisis to go to waste. They seek to indoctrinate, to silence and to suppress anything that stands in its way and the lying as Biden does and encourage Ghani to do even in the face of terrorists overrunning a nation because it threatened their narrative of lies, leaving Americans stranded, leaving our borders wide open, wanting to dismantle capitalism, demonizing our police, indoctrinating school children. It's all the fruit of the same poisonous leftist tree. Whether it's creating a new terror safe haven abroad, destroying your child's school, or letting your neighborhood deteriorate, leftism only goes in one direction, and that direction eventually goes off of a cliff. Now, the Democrats don't care, though, of course. Look at what they've done to the cities and states they control. And Biden certainly doesn't care. Just ask our new Gold Star families. But here's the good news. We have the power to expose it and to make our voices heard louder than ever. Joe Biden has his back against the wall. So let's remember who we are as conservatives. We don't leave Americans behind. We don't tolerate indoctrination. And most of all, we don't hate the country and we want to preserve its greatness. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.